Have you ever stopped to think that your actions today could echo across millennia and shape entire civilizations? Does it seem exaggerated? Well, get ready for a fascinating journey through time. Imagine a puzzle with billions of pieces, each one representing a life, a decision, a migration. This is the enigma of the origin of the Indian people. And here's the most surprising thing. The key to unlocking this mystery may be hidden in your own DNA, or in the next few minutes, we will unearth secrets that have been hidden for millennia and reveal 12 interesting facts about these ancient people and what their connections are with biblical texts. Curiosity number one, ancient origins of the Indian population, tracing its lineage to the times of Noah. In the beginning, when the waters of the great flood receded and Noah's ark rested on Mount Ararat, a new era of humanity began. Noah and his sons, Shem, Ham and Japheth, came down from the mountains to repopulate the earth. Their lineages spread to the four corners of the world, giving rise to different nations and peoples. Among these lineages, we find the deep roots of the Indian population, a history that spans millennia and continents. As generations followed one another, Noah's descendants migrated in different directions. Some headed east, crossing unknown lands and unexplored seas. These courageous travelers, guided by the invisible hand of destiny, eventually reached the fertile lands of the Indian subcontinent. There, they found a paradise of rushing rivers, lush forests and vast plains, an ideal territory to establish new communities and continue their lineage. On the banks of the Indus River, the cradle of Indian civilization, the first settlements began to flourish. These primitive communities, formed by distant descendants of Noah, laid the foundations of what would become one of the richest and most diverse cultures on the planet. Over time, they developed advanced agricultural techniques, complex writing systems, and deep spiritual beliefs that reflected their connection to the earth and the cosmos. As these communities grew and expanded, new waves of migration reached the subcontinent. Each group brought with it unique traditions, diverse skills, and distinct genetic characteristics. This cultural and genetic melting pot has mixed over the centuries, giving rise to the incredible diversity that characterizes the Indian population to this day. From the Himalayan mountains to the southern beaches, each region has developed its own identity while maintaining a common thread that connects them to their common origins. Ancient Hindu scriptures, such as the Vedas and Puranas, preserved echoes of these ancestral migrations in their narratives. Stories of great floods and of heroes who saved humanity from the flood resonate with the biblical narrative of Noah, suggesting a shared cultural memory that transcends geographic and temporal boundaries. These narratives not only serve as historical records, but also as bridges that connect modern Indian identity to its deepest roots. With the advent of modern genetic science, researchers began to unravel the mysteries hidden in the DNA of the Indian population. Studies have revealed a complex genetic tapestry with contributions from diverse ancestral populations. Specific genetic markers have been traced to ancient migrations from Africa, the Middle East, and Central Asia, corroborating traditional narratives and archaeological evidence about the diverse origins of the Indian people. The history of the Indian population, therefore, is an epic saga of journeys, encounters, and mergers. It is a narrative that begins with Noah and his descendants and unfolds through millennia of migrations, conquests, and cultural exchanges. Every Indian carries in their DNA a living testimony of this extraordinary history, a genetic legacy that connects them not only to their immediate ancestors, but to the entire human family. Thus, as we contemplate the vast and varied human landscape of modern India, we can see reflections of the ancient journeys that began on the slopes of Mount Ararat. From the Indo-Gangetic plains to the tropical forests of the south, from the snow-capped mountains of the north to the western deserts, the Indian population is a living testament to humanity's resilience, adaptability, and creativity. 
Her story is a crucial chapter in the grand narrative of the human family, a story that continues to unfold and surprise us with its richness and complexity. Curiosity number two, genetic connection between the people of Southern India and African ancestors, possibly from Ethiopia and Sudan. Deep in time, when the continent still held unexplored secrets, an epic journey began to unfold. From the ancient lands of Africa, the cradle of humanity, groups of brave men and women embarked on an odyssey that would take them across vast expanses of land and sea. Your destination, the fertile and mysterious lands of southern India. This is the story of a genetic connection that spans millennia and oceans, uniting the people of southern India with their African ancestors in an eternal embrace of DNA. The lush green plains of Ethiopia and the banks of the Nile in Sudan were the starting point of this extraordinary journey. In these lands, tens of thousands of years ago, some of the first human civilizations flourished. Gifted with an insatiable curiosity and driven by forces we can only imagine, perhaps climate change, population pressures, or simply the call of the unknown, groups of these early African peoples ventured beyond their familiar borders. Following the coast of the Red Sea and then the Indian Ocean, these African pioneers sailed into unexplored waters. Each generation advanced a little further, establishing new settlements along the way. Over time, they reached the shores of the Indian subcontinent, bringing with them not only their skills and culture, but also their unique genetic heritage. Upon reaching southern India, these travelers found a new home. The dense rainforests, meandering rivers, and fertile lands offered a resource-rich environment, similar in many ways to the lands they had left behind. There, they settled and prospered, giving rise to communities that, over time, would become the ancestors of the modern Dravidian peoples. As generations followed one another, the DNA of these African pioneers became intertwined with that of other populations that later arrived in the region. However, the genetic signature of their African origins remained strong, especially among southern Indian populations. This genetic inheritance is like an invisible thread that connects modern Dravidians to their distant ancestors in the lands of Ethiopia and Sudan. Modern genetic studies have shed light on this fascinating connection. Analysis of mitochondrial DNA, which is passed from mother to child, and the Y chromosome, passed from father to child, revealed patterns that point unequivocally to an African origin for many genetic markers found in southern Indian populations. These studies suggest that the initial migration from Africa to India occurred about 50,000 to 70,000 years ago, a period that coincides with modern humanity's great expansions out of Africa. This genetic link is not just a scientific curiosity, but a testament to the fundamental unity of the human family. She reminds us that despite superficial differences in appearance and culture, we all share a common history that dates back to the origins of humanity in Africa. The journey of African ancestors to southern India is a crucial chapter in this shared history, an example of the courage, resilience, and adventurous spirit that define our species. Furthermore, this genetic connection has profound implications for our understanding of human history and the formation of civilizations. She challenges simplistic narratives about the isolated development of cultures and invites us to consider a more interconnected view of human history. The ancient migration routes that took Africans to southern India were not only paths for the movement of people, but also for the exchange of ideas, technologies and beliefs that shaped the course of human civilization. Curiosity number three. Migration of African people to India, settling mainly in the south of the country. The story of the migration of African people to India is a saga of courage, perseverance and adaptation that spans tens of thousands of years. 
This epic journey, which took groups of intrepid travelers from the African savannas to the lush lands of southern India, is a testament to the incredible human ability to explore and settle in new environments. The starting point of this odyssey dates back to approximately 70,000 years ago, when groups of Homo sapiens began to venture beyond the limits of the African continent. Driven by a combination of factors, climate change, population growth, the search for new resources, these early explorers embarked on a journey that would take them through unknown territories and unexplored seas. The likely route taken by these African migrants took them along the Red Sea coast and then along the coast of the Arabian Peninsula. This coastal path, known as the Southern Route, offered a number of advantages access to marine resources, a milder climate, and crucially, the possibility of following the coastline, minimizing the risk of getting lost in unknown lands. As they advanced, these groups established temporary settlements along the way. Each stop became a point of rest and regrouping, where new generations were born and grew up. Over time, some of these settlements became permanent, giving rise to coastal communities that maintained cultural and genetic ties to their African ancestors. Eventually, after a journey that may have spanned thousands of years and countless generations, the descendants of these African pioneers reached the shores of the Indian subcontinent. South India, with its tropical forests, plentiful rivers and warm climate, offered a familiar and welcoming environment for these weary travelers. Settlement in southern India was not a quick or simple process. The newcomers had to adapt to a new ecosystem, learn to grow new plants and hunt different animals. At the same time, they had to negotiate their space with populations that already inhabited the region. This process of adaptation and integration has profoundly shaped both migrants and local communities. Over time, these African settlers merged with local populations, giving rise to the ancestors of the modern Dravidian people. This fusion was not only genetic, but also cultural. Traditions, knowledge and practices brought from Africa mixed with local cultures, creating a rich cultural tapestry that still characterizes southern India today. Evidence of this migration and settlement can be found not only in the genetics of modern populations, but also in cultural and linguistic aspects. Some agricultural practices, fishing techniques, and even elements of music and dance found in southern India have fascinating parallels with African traditions, suggesting a deep and lasting connection between the two continents. As these communities of African origin settled and prospered in southern India, they began to develop unique cultural and linguistic characteristics. The Dravidian language, for example, which today includes languages such as Tamil, Telugu and Malayalam, may have its roots in this ancient African migration. Some linguists suggest that there are structural similarities between Dravidian languages and certain African languages, although this theory is still the subject of academic debate. The impact of this migration was not just limited to southern India. Although the south was the main point of settlement, there is evidence that some groups continued their journey, gradually spreading to other parts of the subcontinent. This would explain the presence of African genetic markers in other Indian populations, although to a lesser extent than in the south. A fascinating aspect of this migration story is how it is reflected in local traditions and mythologies. Many folk stories and legends from South India tell of ancestors who came from the sea or from distant lands beyond the horizon. These narratives, passed down from generation to generation, may be distant echoes of the collective memory of this ancient African migration. The influence of these African migrants on the formation of Indian civilization is profound and multifaceted. They brought with them not only their genes, but also knowledge and technologies that contributed significantly to the development of the region. Agricultural techniques, navigation methods, and even medicinal practices can all trace their origins to this ancient connection to Africa. From an archaeological point of view, African migration to India left subtle but significant traces. 
Stone tools and other artifacts found at archaeological sites in southern India show striking similarities to those found in parts of East Africa, providing tangible evidence of this ancient journey. It is important to note that this migration was not a one-time event, but an ongoing process that took place over thousands of years. Successive waves of migrants, each bringing their own genetic and cultural contributions, have helped shape the rich diversity that characterizes modern India. The story of African migration to India is a powerful testament to human resilience and adaptability. Facing immense challenges, from perilous sea crossings to adapting to new environments and interacting with unfamiliar populations, these ancient travelers not only survived, but thrived, leaving a lasting legacy that continues to shape the Indian subcontinent to this day. Curiosity number four. Significant presence of DNA of African origin among the Andamanese and Dravidians. Deep in the forests of the Andaman Islands and the vast plains of southern India, an ancient secret is written in the very DNA of the inhabitants. It is a story that goes back tens of thousands of years, a narrative of migration, survival and adaptation that unites the Andamanese and Dravidians with their distant African ancestors. The Andamanese, native inhabitants of the Andaman Islands in the Bay of Bengal, have long intrigued anthropologists and geneticists. Their geographic and cultural isolation has made them one of the most genetically distinct human groups in the world. But what many don't know is that, hidden in their DNA, is a deep bond with the African continent. Recent genetic studies have revealed that the Andamanese possess a significant proportion of genetic markers that can be traced directly to ancient African populations. This African DNA is not a recent addition, but rather a fundamental part of their genetic makeup, suggesting a connection that dates back to the earliest human migrations out of Africa. The presence of this African DNA among the Andamanese is particularly fascinating because it offers a unique window into humanity's past. Due to their prolonged isolation, the Andamanese have preserved genetic lineages that may have disappeared in other populations. This makes them a kind of genetic time capsule, offering valuable insights into what our common African ancestors were like. Moving to the mainland, we find a similar, albeit more complex story among the Dravidian peoples of southern India. The Dravidians, which include groups such as the Tamils, Telugus, and Malayalis, also carry a significant heritage of African ancestors in their DNA. The presence of African DNA among the Dravidians is particularly intriguing due to its complexity and diversity. Unlike the Andamanese, who remained relatively isolated, the Dravidians experienced multiple waves of migration and interbreeding over the millennia. This has resulted in a fascinating genetic mosaic where African markers mix with genetic influences from other parts of Asia and beyond. Detailed genetic studies have revealed that certain mitochondrial and Y-chromosome haplogroups, which are characteristic of African populations, are found in significant frequencies among Dravidians. For example, mitochondrial haplogroup M, which is common in East Africa, is also prevalent in southern India. This suggests a direct connection between the populations of these two regions, possibly dating back to 50,000 to 70,000 years ago. The distribution of these African genetic markers among Dravidians is not uniform. Some communities display a higher proportion of African DNA than others, reflecting complex patterns of migration, intermarriage and isolation over time. This variation offers geneticists a unique opportunity to map the movements and interactions of ancient human populations. Furthermore, the presence of African DNA in Dravidians is not limited to just neutral markers. Recent research suggests that certain genes related to adaptation to tropical climates and disease resistance, which were advantageous in Africa, have also been preserved in southern Indian populations. This demonstrates how African heritage continues to influence the biology and health of these populations to this day. It is important to note 
that the presence of African DNA among the Andamanese and Dravidians does not in any way diminish the richness and uniqueness of their cultures and identities. On the contrary, it adds a fascinating layer to their story, connecting them to a global narrative of human migration and adaptation. Fun fact number five. Subsequent migration of Iranian farmers to India, resulting in genetic mixing. Thousands of years ago, as the first civilizations began to flourish on the banks of the world's great rivers, an epic story of migration and transformation was about to unfold in the heart of Asia. From the fertile lands of what we now know as Iran, a group of innovative farmers embarked on a journey that would forever change the course of Indian history. These Iranian farmers were not simple peasants. They were the heirs of an agricultural revolution that had transformed the fertile crescent. With advanced knowledge of cereal cultivation, livestock husbandry, and irrigation techniques, they carried with them the seeds of a new era. Driven by the search for new lands to cultivate and the promise of opportunities beyond the horizon, they ventured east to the Indian subcontinent. The journey was not easy. They crossed scorching deserts, climbed imposing mountains, and crossed turbulent rivers. Each step took them further from their homeland and closer to an uncertain destination. But determination drove them forward, guided by the hope of a prosperous future in new and fertile lands. When they finally reached the plains of northern India, they found a world very different from the one they had left behind. The land was rich and abundant, but already inhabited by people with their own traditions and ways of life. The descendants of the first African migrants, who had arrived millennia earlier, had developed their own cultures and agricultural practices adapted to the local environment. The encounter between Iranian farmers and populations in India was a moment of cultural clash and at the same time of unprecedented opportunities. The newcomers brought with them new crops such as wheat and barley, as well as advanced agricultural techniques that promised to significantly increase food production. On the other hand, they had to learn about the region's native plants and animals, adapting their knowledge to local conditions. Over time, what began as a meeting between strangers evolved into a gradual fusion of peoples and cultures. Intermarriages between Iranian farmers and local populations became common, beginning a process of genetic mixing that would leave an indelible mark on India's gene pool. This mixing was not only biological, but also cultural, with ideas, technologies and beliefs being exchanged and adapted. The impact of this migration was profound and lasting. Agricultural techniques brought by the Iranians, combined with local knowledge, have led to a significant increase in food production. This, in turn, allowed for population growth and the development of larger, more complex settlements, paving the way for the emergence of the first cities in the region. More than that, this migration and subsequent mixing laid the foundation for the incredible genetic and cultural diversity that characterizes modern India. The legacy of these Iranian farmers can be seen not only in the genes of today's Indians, but also in aspects of their culture, language, and agricultural practices that persist to this day. It is a story that reminds us that a people's identity is often shaped by encounters and exchanges, and that diversity is a source of strength and resilience. Curiosity number six. Current genetic makeup of Indians, approximately 45% Afro-Dravidian and 45% Ancient Iranian. In the veins of modern Indians runs a fascinating story of migration, adaptation and mixing that goes back tens of thousands of years. It is a narrative written not on parchment or stone tablets, but in the very DNA of a people. A close look at this genetic code reveals a surprising composition. Approximately 45% Afro-Dravidian heritage and 45% ancient Iranian origin. A duality that reflects the epic population movements that shaped the subcontinent. The story begins with India's first inhabitants, the descendants of African migrants who arrived about 65,000 years ago. 
These pioneers, adapting to the new environment, gave rise to the Dravidian populations. Your DNA carries the echoes of the African savannas, a genetic reminder of your long journey across continents and millennia. Thousands of years later, a new wave of migrants arrived in Indian lands. Coming from the regions we now know as Iran, these farmers brought with them not only new farming techniques, but also a distinct genetic heritage. Their arrival marked the beginning of a genetic and cultural fusion that would forever transform the human landscape of India. Over the centuries, these two populations, the Dravidians of African origin and the farmers of Iranian origin, mixed, married and had children. Each generation inherited a little of both worlds, creating a unique genetic mosaic. This mixing was not a quick or simple process, but occurred gradually over thousands of years, shaped by geographic, cultural and social factors. The result of this ancient fusion is the genetic makeup we see in modern Indians today. The almost equal proportion of Afro-Dravidian and ancient Iranian heritage is a testimony to the deep and enduring nature of this mixture. It is as if each individual's DNA tells two parallel stories one of hunter-gatherers adapted to the tropics, and the other of innovative highland farmers. This genetic duality is not just a scientific curiosity, but has profound implications for understanding Indian history and culture. It explains, for example, the incredible phenotypic diversity found in India, the variety of skin tones, facial features, and hair types that characterize the population. More than that, it offers insights into the origins of cultural practices, traditions, and even predispositions to certain medical conditions. It is important to note that this composition of 45% Afro-Dravidian and 45% Old Iranian is an average for the Indian population as a whole. In reality, there are significant variations between different regions and ethnic groups. Some populations may have a higher proportion of Afro-Dravidian DNA, while others may have more Iranian influence. These variations reflect historical patterns of migration, marriage, and geographic isolation. Studying the genetic makeup of modern Indians is more than an academic exercise. It is a window into the past that helps us better understand who we are and where we came from. It reveals a story of resilience, adaptation and unity that transcends borders and millennia. It's a powerful reminder that, in the end, we all share a common story, written in the universal code of DNA. Fun fact number seven. Variations in the percentage of Afro-Dravidian ancestry among different groups in South India. In the lush and diverse lands of southern India, where rivers meander through verdant valleys and ancient cities rise in the shadow of ancient temples, a fascinating story unfolds. It is not a story told in books or inscribed in stone, but a narrative written in the very DNA of the people who call this region home. It is the story of Afro-Dravidian ancestry, a genetic legacy that varies intriguingly among the different ethnic groups of southern India. Imagine traveling through the diverse communities of the south, from the beaches of Kerala to the plains of Tamil Nadu, from the forests of Karnataka to the highlands of Andhra Pradesh. At each stop on this journey, you would find people with different physical characteristics, speaking different languages, practicing unique customs. What you wouldn't see right away, but what geneticists have discovered, is that each of these groups carries a different proportion of Afro-Dravidian ancestry in their DNA. In some coastal communities in Kerala, for example, the percentage of Afro-Dravidian ancestry can reach 60% or more. These are the descendants of those first African migrants who arrived in India tens of thousands of years ago, preserving in their genes a direct connection with the cradle of humanity. Their darker skin and distinct physical features are a living testament to this ancient heritage. Moving inland, in certain farming communities of Tamil Nadu, the percentage could drop to around 40%. Here, mixing with later arriving populations, such as the farmers of ancient Iran, has diluted Afro-Dravidian ancestry over the millennia.
However, it remains a significant and vital part of these people's genetic heritage. In the hilly regions of Karnataka and the borders of Andhra Pradesh, we find even greater variation. Some uncontacted tribes in the Western Ghats may have preserved a very high percentage of Afro-Dravidian ancestry, sometimes reaching 70% or more. These communities, often living in relative isolation, are like genetic time capsules, offering a glimpse of what the original genetic makeup of India's earliest inhabitants may have been like. Conversely, in some urban communities and in groups that have historically had more contact with North Indian populations, the percentage of Afro-Dravidian ancestry may be lower, perhaps 30% or less. This reflects centuries of migration, trade and intermarriage between different groups, resulting in a more complex genetic mix. It is crucial to understand that these variations are not just numbers on a geneticist's chart. They tell the story of ancient migrations, of adaptations to different environments, of cultural encounters, and of decisions made by countless generations of ancestors. Each percentage is a chapter in humanity's grand narrative, a story of survival, adaptation, and resilience. Most importantly, these variations in Afro-Dravidian ancestry highlight the incredible diversity of South India. They remind us that ethnic and cultural identities are complex and multifaceted, shaped not only by genetics, but also by history, language, religion, and countless other factors. It is a testament to the richness of human heritage, a genetic and cultural mosaic that makes South India one of the most fascinating and diverse places in the world. Fun fact number eight, influence of the Indo-Aryans on Indian genetics and linguistics, including the introduction of Sanskrit. On the fertile plains of northern India, some 3,500 years ago, a new wave of migration was about to drastically reshape the genetic and linguistic landscape of the subcontinent. The Indo-Aryans, a group of nomadic pastoralists from the Eurasian steppes, began moving south bringing with them not only a new set of genes, but also a language that would forever change the course of Indian history, Sanskrit. Imagine the scene, skilled riders mounted on sturdy horses appearing on the horizon. Their war chariots, drawn by horses, were an impressive and terrifying sight for the local populations. But the Indo-Aryans were not just warriors, they were bearers of a rich and complex culture, with traditions, beliefs, and most importantly, a language that would become the mother of many of India's modern languages. The genetic impact of the arrival of the Indo-Aryans was profound. Although their numbers were relatively small compared to the existing population, their genetic influence spread quickly. Intermarriages between the newcomers and local populations led to new mixing in the Indian gene pool. Genetic markers, characteristic of steppe populations, began to appear with increasing frequency, especially in the upper castes of northern India. But perhaps the most lasting and transformative influence of the Indo-Aryans was linguistic. Sanskrit, the language they brought with them, was a sophisticated and highly structured Indo-European language. His arrival marked the beginning of a linguistic revolution that still resonates today. Sanskrit not only became the language of the elite and sacred texts, but also profoundly influenced existing languages and gave rise to many of the modern languages of North India. The introduction of Sanskrit had an impact that went beyond mere communication. It was the language of the Vedas, the sacred texts that would form the basis of Hinduism. Through Sanskrit, complex philosophical concepts, religious ideas and scientific knowledge were transmitted and preserved. The very structure of the language, with its intricate grammar and rich vocabulary, has shaped Indian thought and expression for millennia. As the Indo-Aryans settled and mixed with local populations, a new cultural synthesis began to emerge. Ancient Dravidian traditions merged with Indo-Aryan practices, creating the basis of what would become classical Indian culture. This fusion is evident not only in genetics and language, but also in religion, art, literature, and social practices. 
However, it is important to note that Indo-Aryan influence was not uniform throughout India. Its impact was most pronounced in the north, gradually diminishing as it moved south. This partly explains the linguistic and cultural differences between North and South India that persist to this day. While the languages of Northern India are predominantly Indo-Aryan, those of the South remain Dravidian, albeit with a significant influence of Sanskrit in their vocabulary. The history of Indo-Aryan influence in India is a testament to the transformative power of migration and cultural exchange. It is a reminder that the cultural and linguistic identities we consider fixed and immutable are in fact the result of complex historical processes of mixing and adaptation. Today's India, with its incredible linguistic and cultural diversity, is a living product of this ancient encounter between Indo-Aryans and existing populations. A testament to the human capacity to create something new and beautiful from the encounter of different worlds. Fun fact number nine. Development and importance of Hindi as the official language of India. In the vastness of the Indian subcontinent, where thousands of languages dance on the lips of more than a billion people, one voice rises above the others, uniting a diverse country in a single breath. This is the story of Hindi a language that has transcended its humble origins to become the beating heart of communication in modern India. Our story begins on the fertile plains of northern India more than a thousand years ago. Here, on the banks of the sacred rivers Ganges and Yamuna, a new language was being born. It was a fascinating mix, a linguistic melting pot where ancient Sanskrit fused with local dialects and the languages of Muslim invaders. This new language, initially known as Hindavi, was the ancestor of what would become modern Hindi. As the centuries passed, this evolving language spread like a controlled fire, ignited by the poetry of pious saints and fueled by the tales of wandering bards. From village to village, from mouth to mouth, early Hindi traveled, absorbing new words and expressions, shaping itself as it shaped the people who spoke it. It was a language of the people, born in the streets and bazaars, in the fields and in the kitchens. The advent of British rule in India brought new challenges and opportunities for Hindi. The colonizers, in their quest for administrative efficiency, inadvertently gave Hindi a boost. They recognized its potential as a lingua franca, a bridge across the chasm of India's linguistic diversity. Thus, Hindi began its journey of transformation from a regional language to a national language. But it was with the awakening of the Indian independence movement that Hindi truly found its voice as the language of national unity. Leaders like Mahatma Gandhi and Jawaharlal Nehru saw Hindi as a symbol of Indian identity, a tool to unite a nation divided by centuries of foreign rule. They dreamed of an India where Hindi would be the common language, a golden thread weaving together the country's diverse linguistic traditions. With independence in 1947, this dream began to take shape. Hindi was declared the official language of the new nation alongside English. It was a moment of triumph, but also of challenge. How could a predominantly northern language represent such a diverse nation? How could Hindi balance its new official role with the rich tapestry of other Indian languages? The following decades saw Hindi emerge as a unifying force, but not without controversy. In the southern states, where Dravidian languages reigned supreme, there was resistance to the perceived imposition of Hindi. The Indian government had to navigate carefully, promoting Hindi while respecting and preserving the country's linguistic diversity. Today, Hindi is at the center of Indian life. It is the language of government and the media, of Bollywood cinema and popular culture. Millions speak it as their first language, and many more as a second or third. But modern Hindi is not just a sterile official language. It is a living, breathing entity, continually enriched by its interactions with English, India's regional languages, and the globalized world. Hindi has become more than just a language, it is a symbol of modern Indian identity, 
a testament to the country's ability to forge unity out of diversity. It is a language that carries within it the history of a nation, from the battlefields of independence to the boardrooms of modern corporations. The story of Hindi is the story of India itself. Complex, challenging, but always vibrant and evolving. Curiosity number 10. Origin and migration of the Roma, Gypsies, from Northern India. On the dusty plains of Northern India, more than a thousand years ago, an epic journey began that continues to this day. This is the story of the Roma, known to many as Gypsies, a people whose lives have been a continuous odyssey, a dance between cultures, a saga of survival and adaptation. Our story begins on the banks of the Ganges River, where a community of artisans, musicians and traders lived in relative peace. They were known for their skill with brass, their mesmerizing music and their ability to tell fortunes. But destiny had other plans for these people. For reasons that have been lost to the mists of time, perhaps invasions, famine or persecution, they were forced to leave their homeland. Thus began a migration that would last centuries and cover continents. With nothing but what they could carry and their rich cultural heritage, the Roma headed west. They crossed the mountains of the Hindu Kush, crossed the deserts of Persia and followed the Silk Road. At each stop, they absorbed a bit of local culture, adding new colors to their already vibrant cultural tapestry. As they advanced, the Roma faced constant challenges. They were strangers in strange lands, speaking an unknown language, practicing different customs. In some places, they were welcomed for their skills and entertainment. In others, they were viewed with suspicion and fear, but always they adapted, survived, and moved on. They arrived in Europe around the 14th century, spreading like a colorful fan across the continent. In Spain, their music merged with local traditions to create flamenco. In the Balkans, their metalworking skills were highly valued. In Eastern Europe, they have become an integral part of the cultural landscape, although they are often marginalized. But the Roma's journey was not just geographic, it was also an odyssey of identity. As they moved, they struggled to maintain their unique culture while adapting to new environments. Their language, Romani, evolved, incorporating words from each place they passed through, but maintaining its original Indian structure. Their traditions, although modified by time and circumstance, maintained a core that echoed their Indian origins. The story of the Roma is also a story of persecution and resilience. Over the centuries, they have faced discrimination, expulsion, and even attempted genocide. The Holocaust, in particular, was a dark chapter in its history, with hundreds of thousands of Roma perishing in Nazi concentration camps. But, as always, they survived, their culture supple as a willow, bending but never breaking under the weight of history. Uh, today, the Roma are spread across the world, forming a global diaspora that some estimate at 12 million people. From camps on the outskirts of European cities to established communities in North America, the Roma continue their journey. They face new challenges, integration, cultural preservation, fighting persistent stereotypes, but they do so with the same resilience and creativity that has sustained them for a millennium. The saga of the Roma is a testament to the incredible human capacity for adaptation and survival. It's a story that reminds us that borders are human constructs, that culture is a living, evolving force, and that in the end, we are all travelers on this great journey of life. The Roma, with their soul dance music, colorful traditions, and epic history, continue to enrich the tapestry of human experience, reminding us of the beauty and complexity of our shared diversity. Fun fact number 11. Linguistic diversity in India, including the Indo-Aryan and Dravidian language families, across the vast expanse of the Indian subcontinent, where mountains touch the sky and rivers meander across ancient plains, unfolds a history as rich and varied as the land itself. This is the saga of India's linguistic diversity, 
a kaleidoscope of sounds and meanings that echoes through the millennia, weaving a verbal tapestry of incomparable beauty. Our story begins thousands of years ago, when the first words were whispered in the primordial forests of southern India. These were the Dravidian languages, born of the earth and shaped by time. Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam and Kannada. These ancient languages carry in their sounds the secrets of lost civilizations, of kingdoms that flourished and fell long before written history. But fate had other plans for this land of many voices. From the northwest came the Indo-Aryans, bringing with them not only new genetics, but also a new linguistic family. Sanskrit, the language of the Vedas, arrived like a majestic wave, its complex grammar and rich vocabulary spreading across the Gangetic Plain. From this source would spring the modern Indo-Aryan languages, Hindi, Bengali, Marathi, Gujarati, each a unique jewel in India's linguistic crown. As the centuries passed, these two great linguistic families, Dravidian and Indo-Aryan, danced an elaborate ballet of influence and counter-influence. Words traveled from south to north and north to south, enriching each language they touched. Sanskrit lent its solemnity to the Dravidian languages, while these, in turn, colored the northern languages with their unique musicality. But the linguistic history of India is not limited to these two main families. In the mountains of the northeast, an entirely different group of languages flourished. The Sino-Tibetan languages, distant relatives of Chinese and Tibetan, added another layer of complexity to the already rich mix. And in the Andaman Islands, languages so ancient and isolated that they defy classification are still spoken by handfuls of people, echoes of an almost forgotten past. The arrival of invaders and traders over the centuries only increased this diversity. The Persian of the Mughals, the Portuguese of the European colonizers, the Arabic of the traders, all have left their mark on the linguistic landscape of India. English, initially the language of the British colonizers, was adopted and transformed, becoming an Indian language in its own right, spoken with a unique flavor that only India could give. This incredible linguistic diversity is more than an academic curiosity. It is the beating heart of Indian identity. Each language is a world in itself, with its own literature, its own poetry, its own ways of seeing and describing the world. A proverb in Tamil may have no equivalent in Hindi. A joke in Bengali can lose its flavor in translation. Yet, somehow, all these languages come together to form the unique symphony that is the voice of India. Today, India officially recognizes 22 languages, but linguists estimate that the actual number of languages and dialects spoken in the country could be as high as 1,652. It is a diversity that defies comprehension, a testament to the incredible human capacity to create and shape language. Every village, every valley, every community has its own way of speaking, its own way of giving voice to the dreams and aspirations of its people. This linguistic diversity of India is both a blessing and a challenge. It is a source of cultural pride and a potential barrier to national communication. It is a treasure trove of ancient knowledge and an obstacle to educational standardization. But most of all, it is a living reminder of the incredible richness of the human experience. In Indian Babel, each word is a window to a different world, each sentence a bridge between cultures. It is a daily celebration of the diversity that makes India not just a country, but a continent of linguistic imagination. Curiosity number 12. Biblical connections. Relationship between African migrations and Ham, and between the Indo-Aryans and Japheth, descendants of Noah. In the ancient pages of the Bible, between accounts of creation and the flood, we find the first whispers of a story that would span millennia and continents. 
This is the saga of Noah's sons, Ham and Japheth, whose mythical journeys seem to echo the historical migrations that shaped the world as we know it today. Our story begins in the aftermath of the Great Flood. The waters had receded, the Ark rested in the mountains of Ararat, and humanity, reduced to a single family, was preparing to repopulate the earth. Noah blessed his sons, each destined to become the father of nations. Among them were Ham and Japheth, whose descendants, according to tradition, would spread to form the great civilizations of Africa and Eurasia. Cam, whose name in Hebrew means hot, is traditionally associated with African people. The Bible speaks of the sons of Ham, Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan, names that echo ancient regions of Africa and the Near East. In the biblical narrative, Ham's descendants move south and west, settling in the warm, fertile lands of the African continent. Interestingly, this mythical narrative appears to mirror the actual migratory movements of early modern humans. Archaeological and genetic evidence points to an African origin of humanity, with successive waves of migration leaving Africa to populate the rest of the world. The first inhabitants of India, the ancestors of the Dravidian populations, are thought to be part of these early migrations from Africa. Japheth, on the other hand, is often associated with Indo-European peoples. His name, which can mean expanse in Hebrew, seems prophetic when we consider the vast geographic expanse occupied by his supposed descendants. The Bible lists among the sons of Japheth names such as Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, names that scholars have tried to associate with ancient tribes and regions of Eurasia. It is tempting to see in this narrative of Japheth an echo of the Indo-Aryan migrations to India. The Indo-Aryans, speakers of Indo-European languages, moved from the Eurasian steppes to the Indian subcontinent about 3,500 years ago, bringing with them not only a new language, but also new technologies, cultural practices, and religious beliefs. This migration profoundly transformed the cultural and linguistic landscape of the subcontinent, giving rise to the modern Indo-Aryan languages and contributing significantly to the development of Hinduism. It is important to note, however, that these connections between biblical narratives and historical migratory movements are more poetic than literal. Modern science offers us a much more complex and nuanced picture of human migrations and the development of civilizations. Human populations have moved, mixed and evolved in ways that defy simple categorization. Still, there is something deeply fascinating about the way these ancient narratives seem to capture, even if in simplified form, the great movements of human history. They remind us that we are all, ultimately, descendants of migrants, products of epic journeys that began on the plains of Africa and took us to the four corners of the globe. The stories of Ham and Japheth, therefore, are not just relics of a distant past, but reflections of a fundamental truth about human nature. We are a species of travelers, always on the move, always in search of new horizons. Our languages, our cultures, our very identities are the result of this eternal movement, this continuous dance of peoples and ideas through time and space. The origin of the Indian people is a complex tapestry woven over millennia of migrations, cultural interactions, and indigenous developments. There is no single origin for this diverse people, but rather a confluence of several historical and genetic currents. Archaeological and genetic evidence suggests that the Indian subcontinent was initially populated by groups that migrated from Africa tens of thousands of years ago. These were later supplemented by waves of migration from the Middle East, Central Asia, and possibly other regions. The Indus Valley Civilization, one of the oldest in the world, flourished around 3300 to 1300 BCE, laying the foundation for many aspects of Indian culture. The subsequent Indo-Aryan migration brought new languages, technologies, and cultural practices. Over the centuries, these diverse influences have merged and evolved, creating the rich cultural tapestry that characterizes modern India. 
The Indian people are therefore a mosaic of diversity, united by a shared history of continuous exchange and adaptation.